Hello, and welcome to Conversations with Daniel, a funeral director. I'm Daniel. My hope is to draw the community in to support each other through conversations on death and life. Today we have the privilege of listening to a conversation with Pastor Chris Walker, leading pastor of Meadowbrook Church, a Mennonite Brethren congregation in Leamington, Ontario. Chris is married to Sarah, and they have two children. In this conversation, we get to see what Meadowbrook Church currently has going on, including a free farmer's market. We also see how they support each other through tough times. Listen to hear how Pastor Chris's experience with a tragic death at 16 years old affected his perspective in life. Finally, I am asked what people should do or say when going to a funeral. Thank you so much, Pastor Chris, for joining me in this conversation. Very excited uh, to converse with you today. Yeah, it's great to be here. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. Um, so, icebreaker question for you. What is your favorite way to eat potatoes? Oh, good question. I I found a great recipe in the last year of you, you take, it's a baked potato. Okay. But you take it, you sort of half bake it. Mm-hmm. And then you pull it out, you scoop it out, as you've, you've seen recipes like that before. Uh, you sort of cut it in half, and then you fill it with you know, bacon and green onion and tomato and all these things. And then you crack an egg in it oh. and put it in there, and then you bake it again. And so then when you pull it out, you cut the egg, and it runs all over everything. And it's, oh. it's my favorite it's my sounds, favorite potato ever. Yeah. Sounds so good. I don't do those often, but that's a <laughs> like special date night. What kind, of cheese, what kind of cheese do you use? I'll do a mix of like cheddar and mozzarella and some right. Monterey, maybe. Yeah. Steak on the side? Oh, yeah. Oh. Or something grilled. Something anyway. grilled. Yeah. But usually it would be steak. And, Sounds yeah. awesome. That's a good day. I will have get to get there. that recipe. For yeah, me. that's a good. I one. have most of it up here. Right, right. garlic, garlic. And oh lime. yeah, okay. there's all sorts of seasoning okay. that goes with it. And yeah, it's pretty great. That's awesome. Yeah, um, tell me a little bit about what you have going on here at church and what your vision is for the congregation and even the community. Yeah, you know. sure. So I've been here about seven years now this summer, and uh, I've been in different roles. I'm the lead pastor right now. And we have, uh, partly just even during COVID, has caused us to really reevaluate a lot of things just because we had time to do that and everything kind of stalled out for a while. And I mean, nothing stopped, but in terms of we had plans and a lot of those plans we had to stick a pin in. And, yeah. uh, and so we had lots of time to pray and lots of time to talk. And so, uh, so right now, I mean, the vision during COVID was has been just we got to get through COVID as a congregation so how are we caring for one another and how are we staying connected but one of the things COVID did as well was make us realize you know what we we focus a lot of attention on what we're doing here in the church uh, and that's not a bad thing but Mm -hmm. we need to be way more active out in our community and so COVID has opened some doors there uh, in terms of what we can be doing and it's part of a much bigger conversation of you know it's great if we like our Sunday mornings here and if we have a good youth ministry and kids ministry and all these things Um, but that doesn't matter if people aren't being met with the love of God wherever they are it doesn't matter if people aren't coming to know Jesus and so we want to keep what we're doing in-house because Mm -hmm. we're we really are enjoying that But it's just made us very aware that, oh, there's so much hurt out there. There's so many needs out there. um, And we don't want to just be hanging out in the church all the time. We're supposed to be out there. And so so that's an ongoing conversation. And I think more and more at Meadowbrook, we're going to be looking outward. And where where can we be connected out there? That's great. Do you have any anything in progress right now? in, the, in that regard? Yeah, so we there's a community meal where we partner with other okay. churches, so that happens on Monday nights. Uh, so a, a big thing coming up for us, this is the first time we're trying it, but um, we're going to do a farmer's market here at oh. the church outside, wow. um, but totally free. Like we're not, not for any profit or anything. Um, and just recognizing, again, there's lots of needs in the community. Uh, God's been really good to us at Meadowbrook, and so... Um, we want to just kind of as a Thanksgiving offering to him just to, to make stuff available. So people in the church are baking pies and breads oh, and wow. jams and preserves and produce and, uh, and awesome. all those things. And so that will be uh, August 14th. That'll be here uh, in our parking lot. And Mark that in your calendar. August 14th at oh. Meadowbrook Church in Leamington. And uh, everybody's welcome. And, uh, and there'll be, yeah, just lots of stuff going on that day. And so, yeah, awesome. so we're just trying to find 
practical ways that we can be a blessing to people. That's, that's beautiful. That's great. Hey, sounds sounds similar similar to some uh, church in in Acts and what you kind of see, right? right? And yeah. that's that's a that's a really I think that's a really healthy um, direction that God's bringing you guys mm-hmm. to. Yeah, get the hurting people. Yeah, and, right. And help them out. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, thank you. And for a long time, we've been. I think most churches, it's been very much like, how do we draw people in? How right. do we attract more people? How right. do we? It was kind of that lighthouse model. We call it the lighthouse is there, and it's meant to draw people to the light. Right. Um, but it's it a it doesn't really work that well. Like it's not super effective because right. uh, lots of people will just never come into a church. But it's also really almost the opposite of what Jesus told us to do, right? Jesus said, be a light and take your light and go into all the nations. Um, it was go. That was the, right, as it's right. been said, the first part of gospel is go. And we've kind of done the opposite in church where we just kind of sit around and, and hopefully with what we're doing, the programs we have will attract enough people in. Um, but our job is to go meet yeah. people with where, where they're at, right? And that's what Jesus did for us. He came and he came to us and mm-hmm. he met us where we're at. So we're trying to, th- be more Christ-like in that way rather than awesome. just kind of throwing up a sign or, or putting on a new program and hoping that people come. It's right. been, you know what, there's hurting people and they just need to be met in their pain and, and we can do whatever we can to meet them there. Yeah, that's yeah. great. Awesome, thank you. Yeah. Um, we're going to go into a little bit more of the funeral and grief-related mm-hmm. topics now. So I'd like to ask, does, your, does the congregation here in the community, do you have any traditions um, or practices that might be specific to your church when it comes to funerals mm-hmm. and uh, for the funeral service itself perhaps mm-hmm. also maybe something that would uh, be for the family who's going through that grief mm-hmm. uh, yeah so I don't know if these things are necessarily unique to our church uh, I think a lot of churches probably do stuff like that but um, so I mean in terms of the yeah there would usually be a funeral service of a religious nature if, right. if someone is looking for us to be a part of that or if someone in our church passed away would that be usually held here in the usually center? here yeah and if it's a smaller group sometimes it might be at a funeral home okay uh, it could yep. be there but yeah often it would be here um, and the funeral itself would be a time of a uh, time of prayer there would usually be some music involved mm-hmm. music that was probably meaningful to the, to the person who passed away or to their family um, it's a time for us to honestly celebrate the gospel because even in grief, uh, the gospel has an element of grief because Jesus dies on the cross, yeah. um, but also ends in hope because we believe that Jesus rose again and we believe that our hope is we too will rise with him. And so uh, there will always be a gospel emphasis at the funeral. And, and so there'll be a, a sermon, there'll be a eulogy usually from one of the family members mm-hmm. who will come to celebrate the life of that person. And Um, Yeah, and I think it's important at a funeral, uh, you know, sometimes these days, especially we emphasize, uh, you know, it's not a funeral, it's a celebration of life. And there's a a feeling of trying to make it kind of light. And I love, you know, when a eulogy tells a funny story that everyone remembers, like, I do think that's important. But it's important that we grieve as well, right? It's important that we that we weep. And Mm -hmm. the Bible tells us as Christians, we're also to weep with those who weep. And so Mm -hmm. in terms of the church family, um, you know, there will definitely be a rallying around uh, and whether that's even just, you know, phone calls or or texts or whatever. Uh, Certainly there'll be a meal train set up for sure and people will be dropping off food. For those who don't know what a meal train is, yeah, I I figured out recently that that's that's church lingo. Okay, uh, right. Yeah, and I, and I, so explain what a meal train yeah, is. Yeah, so a meal train is just when you, you'll post something online. We do it all on websites now. Uh, and it's just, here's a bunch of slots uh, to drop off a meal at someone's house. And so you just email the link to everyone in the church and everyone just picks their slot, signs up for it. Um, and then just brings a meal to the person's house. So yeah, it's yeah, funny. I wouldn't have that's thought of awesome. that as Christian language, but I yeah. guess that's true. I so was t- I was telling somebody, yeah, they're doing a meal train and she goes, Okay, you gotta explain what is. Meal yeah, train. right. And I was like, oh yeah, well, it's a, right. a train of people bringing meals to your house, but right. it, but it's organized. Yeah, right. So that way, uh, that the person who's going through that difficult time, they don't have a fridge that's just packed right. full of food that they'll never be able to eat. Right. They'll get a meal every day, right. and that's spread out. Awesome. Yeah. yeah. So that's really cool. Yeah, and and yeah, and Christians usually in a church setting do food pretty well, right? Yes. We were, we're oh, fans yes. of the potluck and everything, yeah. so. Uh, yeah, so very practically, there'll be stuff like that. There will be offers, you know, to the family of 
you know, we can babysit your kids while you go to the funeral home to work stuff out oh, or whatever. Nice. So there's definitely a rallying to it. That's great. Um, Community support. Yeah. And people, church members will show up at the visitation. They'll show up mm-hmm. at, at the funeral, of course. And uh, here at the church, our deacon team, which is kind of a team of servant hearted people who help out practically, uh, we'll put on a lunch after the ceremony okay. here in our gym, and so okay. um, so the family doesn't have to go anywhere. They can just move uh, from the service into there, and so yeah, a lot of food related stuff, I guess, as I'm saying it out loud. But food um, helps me. Yeah, right. It makes everything. I better, love food. Right? I would die if I didn't eat food. <laughs> That's a very true fact. <laughs> Uh, yeah, and then so there will be uh, there will always be just kind of practical needs that we're trying to meet for for the family. And, awesome. Um, yeah, so so those would be a few things. I think a lot of churches would probably be similar. So again, yeah. I don't know if that's unique to Meadowbrook, but those that's are the types neat. of things we would be doing. Yeah, thank you. I, I love that support that you guys have mm-hmm. for each other, uh, looking out for each other mm-hmm. who are hurting. That's yeah. great. Um, this question, let's go a little bit a little bit deep and maybe even personal if sure. you don't mind. Um, feel free to cry if you need to. Right. I, I, I tend to cry once in a while. Yeah. Sure. Um, have you experienced anything uh, personally with death in your life that has had an impact on your perspective in life? Yeah. So when I was 16, uh, my friend Dean was hit by a car and killed. And that was kind of my first, um, like tragic death, like Mm -hmm. older family members had passed away at that point, which was, which was obviously very sad, but not unexpected. Right. Right. So this one, he was just riding his bike one day. He, he swerved out too far and the car hit him and, uh, he passed away. And so, and that was the first one where, you know, at 16 sort of realizing, oh, we're not actually invincible. Mm -hmm. You know, not everyone makes it to 80 or 90 um and so that was pretty and and because you know he was a popular guy he was on the football team and stuff at his funeral the place was just packed with with young people primarily right just just Mm -hmm. hundreds of young people um and we were all just kind of going through that together and so uh so that was the first again like my grandfather had already died at that point he was older he was not well and Mm -hmm. so we were kind of ready for it and and you know it's a bit less shocking when an older person passes away uh, even though it's still very painful for the family, obviously. It is a, it is a shock, though, to your whole system. For right? sure. When, when you lose a friend or someone young passes right. away, especially in a tragic in an situation. Accident. It's just, yeah. yeah, it's a shock for sure. Yeah. So that, yeah, that was just kind of, you know, I was 16, and we all, all of us at the high school, I think, we all just kind of grew up a few steps quicker than we maybe would have, mm-hmm. right? Everyone was just, we were all kind of forced to, confront the fact like when you're 16 you do feel kind of invincible right like you yeah. don't you don't think about you know how scary life can be and dangers and stuff because you're just young and, and that's just part of it but mm-hmm. so yeah it was definitely a very jarring kind of world redefining moment for for all of us and certainly mm-hmm. for me so young chris wasn't going to live forever yeah and that had a an impact in in the way you proceeded in your life right sure for sure and you were 16 at the time as yeah well. i was 16 mm-hmm. so i mean Just, the, the sort of joke amongst our group of friends is like we all became really good drivers mm-hmm. at 16 <laughs> like just for a really practical example yeah. and i'm not kidding like we really wow. everyone got super just careful because we saw what a car could do you know firsthand and so um yeah so it definitely had an impact for sure That's neat. yeah there's one thing that i i found interesting um it, through different experiences, speaking with people or something that I've maybe I've seen a loved one go through, mm-hmm. um, when when a song might come up on the radio mm-hmm. and it brings them back right to this time where they experienced death right. or or something, or sometimes it might be um, a smell or a sight right. or something interesting. Yeah. Do you have anything like that? Yeah, so for me, there's two things that come to mind. And so one of them is uh, anytime I smell a cigar, because my grandfather who died smoked cigars. Wow. And, and he's, you know, he's been gone for 20 plus years now, probably 25 years. Um, but anytime I whiff any kind of cigar, really? I'm nine years old, I'm back in his house. Wow. Yeah, and so that was my first death, like mm-hmm. that really impacted me. That was a few years before my friend died, but my grandfather died. Uh, when I was 14 and okay. so yeah so there's a very clear connection between cigar smokes and granddad like that's a, a very clear connection yeah even 25 plus years later 
Um, the other thought is, uh, so the Beatles song, In My Life, uh, okay. which was played at a funeral. I was also a teenager when that happened. And older person who passed away, it wasn't, uh, it wasn't quite tragic, like when my friend died, but um, this lady had passed away and she had been a, a friend and uh, they played In My Life at the funeral, which is just, just kind of about life and loving people in our lives and everything. And I don't know if I knew the song before that or if that was the first time I heard it, but same sort of thing. Every time I hear that song, I'm right back at that funeral again. And it's, it's a, it's kind of a, there's a, how to put it, there's a beautiful melancholy to it. Like it's, it's sad. It reminds me of her. Uh, I miss her still these years later. Um, but there's a sweetness to it at the same time. Like it's because it is about love and celebrating Mm -hmm. love and, and we're so lucky that we get to love people and, uh, you know, we only grieve because we love, right? right? Like you don't, you don't grieve people you don't love in the same way, but when you love someone, you feel that loss. Mm-hmm. And so, yeah, In My Life by the Beatles is definitely kind of a, uh, triggering. Is that the right word? Yeah. We use yeah. that word a lot. Yeah. Uh, it, it just, I'm again, right back in the funeral right home. Back. I'm on the funeral home yeah. on Brand Street in Burlington, Ontario in like 1997. Huh. And I'm at that funeral right again. Yeah. That's neat. And I'm wondering those experiences when you smell a cigar, mm-hmm. when you hear that song, and you're brought back, and even if it's just for a small amount of time, yeah, I would imagine that can give you a warm sense mm-hmm. in your heart because you're remembering that love sure. connection that you had yeah. with your grandfather. Yeah, it's almost like um, continuing the healing process 25 years later. Yeah, for sure. And that could be a difficult process for some people if, if if it's something that was really tragic sure. and they have that smell or they hear that song, right. that could be very difficult. For but sure. it doesn't mean that it's still not part of the healing process. Right. 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 Yeah. And, and your, your brain and your emotions are telling you something with whatever's going on. Mm-hmm. And so it's hard to sort through it all. Right. We don't, we don't yeah. always do well at that, but for sure. It's um, but difficult. when you have that reaction, so like my wife uh, years ago was in a car accident, she is okay. Uh, but she was going through a yellow light and someone thought she was going to stop. They tried to turn ahead of her head on collision car was totaled. She was beat up for quite a while. And so even today when she goes through a yellow light, she tenses a little and she can't help it. Even if she knows it's coming, there's just something in her brain that says like yellow light equals car crash and she can't control it. But her, her brain is trying to tell her something, right? Right. Her her brain is locked into that memory. Mm -hmm. And so, um, you know, it's, it's helpful to talk this stuff out. It's helpful yeah. to be honest about this stuff and, Definitely. um, and to pay attention. I say to my church all the time, our emotions, whatever they are, whether they're good ones or bad ones, or whether you think they're reasonable or unreasonable mm-hmm. or over the top or subdued, our emotions are our emotions, right? Yeah. You feel what you feel and they're like the indicator lights on your dashboard sometimes, mm-hmm. right? They're a way of saying, Hey, there's something going on in here that you need to pay attention to. Yeah. And so, you know, it's helpful again, to talk this stuff out, to be able to, to be open about this stuff. It's really good. It's excellent. No, now's your time. I'd like it. Yeah. If you could ask me the funeral director, mm-hmm. uh, anything, anything that comes to your mind. Yeah. So what I, um, like I have this conversation with people in my church all the time. Uh, you know, when my friend died in high school, we were 16. And so we all went to the visitation. We went to the funeral Mm -hmm. at 16, especially you don't have a clue. What are you going to say to his mom? What are you going to say to his brother? Um, you know, what do you do there? But I hear that even now from people in my church who say, Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know what to say to the widow. I don't know what to say at the visitation. And so sometimes people don't go for that very reason. Like they, they don't want to, you know, they don't want to miss it, but they're just overwhelmed with what to say. And mm-hmm. so, like, I'm around funerals a fair bit. I'm around them nowhere near as much as you are, obviously. Uh, so I have some practice in it. But I'd be very curious, what would you say to just your your average person who doesn't go to funerals all the time? Mm-hmm. Um, you know, when you're going and you see that, that grieving widow or that grieving parent or that mm-hmm. grieving child... Um, what do you say? What, what, what is helpful? Cause I think people yeah. sometimes feel like I got to say something profound or I got to say true. something that yeah. encourages or lifts the burden, but that's such an overwhelming thing to take on. It is. So, so yeah. what can we do when we go into yeah. that visitation or that I, funeral I, time? I think, thank you. I think, um, that idea of what can I say that will make them feel better? Um, we, we want to make them feel better sure. because they're going through a hard time, but we have to realize we can't really we can't fix it for them. Right. They're they're sad. 
and they're they're going through a difficult time. Yeah. And so to come up and from your heart with what you're feeling, tell them that you're sorry for what they're going through. Mm-hmm. Uh, don't. There's some things that you shouldn't say as well. Yeah. What are those? Because don't don't important. say, I know what you're going through. Right. Because you don't know what they're going through. Right. You might have a similar right. uh, perspective. You might have a similar instance that you have gone through something similar. But you, we don't know what each and every person goes through. Because the person who they lost, um, they have a special connection right. to that person. It's unique. Is is personal. Yeah. Right. So yeah, don't say I know exactly what you're going through. Right. Don't say, um, oh well, at least you're in a better place. Right. Right. Yeah. Um, because they're still going through that loss. They're still going through that hurt. Even even if they do know that they're in a better place, yeah. um, that's good and that's that's hopeful and that's what we all want. Right. Um, but you're still missing that person. Sure. And you're still grieving that loss. So just from your heart, just say I'm I'm so sorry for what you're going through, mm-hmm. or uh, like. I, I don't have the right words for you. I just want to be here for you. Yeah. And I know we're not supposed to be hugging a lot now during COVID, right. but uh, that tight hug, yeah. just to say, you don't even have to say anything. Mm-hmm. You can just hold that person. Yeah. And 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 just to give them that comfort yeah. means the world. That I'm here for you. Yeah. I I'm think here. it's huge. And yeah. one thing that I was also thinking of just now is, is sometimes you may say, ask me if you need anything. Mm -hmm. Most people aren't going to ask you if they need anything. Right. So that's why I like what your church does. And it's like, okay, we know you're going to need food. Right. You're, you're going to be need to be looked after your kids. So look for something maybe that that person might need help with. Do they need the grass being cut at their house? Yeah. And, and you're able to do that. Say, Hey, can I cut your grass? Can I do something? They might not want you to, they might not accept it, but you can, we don't always ha- have to offer something, yeah. but we do have to know that our words can't fix can't fix them right. um, in where they're at. That we can offer comfort yeah. to say, "I'm I'm so sorry for what you're going through," or or my sincere condolences, um, or or just look them in the eye and say, "I love you," mm-hmm. and I'm here for you. Yeah, yeah, beautiful. All right, thank you so much. I really appreciate this conversation. Yeah, my pleasure. And I hope that it can be of help, and I'm, I'm sure it will be of help to other people. And it's nice to get to know you a little bit more mm-hmm. and uh, to hear your insight on some of these uh, deep topics. Yeah, Thank thanks you. so much for having me. Thank you, Chris. Appreciate it. Thanks for watching. I hope you were inspired and encouraged today. Please like and subscribe. Remember, the Lord is close to the brokenhearted. He rescues those whose spirits are crushed.